How we doing guys? Welcome to the Quest Documentary 2019 from yours truly the Basquista Dog. So you know, I hope you guys have been enjoying my videos. I appreciate all the subscriptions and all the likes you guys and the comments you guys been leaving. It's been awesome. It's been an awesome year. I've been catching all kinds of fish this year. And um, I'm just glad to share it with you guys, you know. I got my kids always with me in my videos. And it's just a very meaningful thing to me, you know. I'm definitely a man of the three F's, you know, family, fishing, and father, almighty father. So, you know, it's something that has been a long time coming. I've been wanting to show you guys, you know, my journey throughout the year. So, make sure you guys, you know, check out my other social sites like Facebook and Instagram and um, Twitter things like that hit those like buttons subscribe all that stuff guys because it's very important hope you guys enjoy so the winters here they start off very 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 cold and um you know you sort of gotta wait for like the water to the frost and stuff like that to catch fish but this year, you know, I I got me a new GoPro, you know, camera equipment for the fishermen is like super expensive. And to get yourself a, an economical but good camera, I would suggest a GoPro. So I went crazy and I bought like three different cameras, a really expensive one, an inexpensive GoPro, and then like the top of the line GoPro and um and it worked out for me because this year I, I just wanted to film um the most footage I can the best footage I can get some clear pictures some clear video for you guys because I wanted you guys to see like the whole transition from when there's ice out in that water to I'm pulling out two pound three pound bass from that water you know what I mean? Yeah, there's some spots that, you know, I like to frequent because these are the spots that I'm most comfortable at. I got the most privacy. I could film. I could do all these things that I want to do. And this year, I was lucky because um, my daughter came with me in the beginning of the year. She took some amazing stills and great video footage of me. So I was kind of happy with that, you know. But, you know, every year is different, as I noticed. Every year, some years you could catch a large amount of fish. And some years you could get skunked almost every other day. So, this year was very hard in the beginning. Very, very, very hard. One, the cold didn't want to go away. It took forever for the cold to go away. And um, we went late into April and it was still cold. Um, but during these times, I caught one or two fish here and there, which gave me hope. Like, hey, there's fish out there. You just got to catch them. In this particular video here, um, me and my daughter come out. I wanted some video footage. I was already getting impatient, you know. I, I wanted to um, go out there and catch some fish, try out some new gear. I already, you know, I had subscribe to um lucky tackle box and mystery tackle box and um and i was getting um a lot of stuff there accumulated all kinds of cranks and poppers and all kinds of things there and, and i just wanted to get out and start using these um new lures to try to catch some fish so me and my daughter decide that, hey, you know, it's, it is a little cold, but I see that people are catching in the cold. So I was like, you know, I need some footage of cold weather catching fish, you know. And um, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, but believe me, it was freezing. It was like freezing every day. And um, this is the Lehigh River where it meets with this um, canal. 
and uh, it's an awesome place. I've, I've caught numerous, numerous, numerous fish. I would say in this one place here, I've caught at least over 50, 60 different spit, uh, uh, fish, you know, different times, you know, different days. But the number one fish that you catch in the beginning of the year here in Pennsylvania is pickerel. Pickerel is the first fish that comes out in the community. As soon as that water melts and stuff like that, the pickerel come out, chain link pickerel come out, and they um want to be. And I use anything and everything to try to catch them, but mostly they'll chase uh like the the um, squiggly tail action plastics on a Texas rig and I'll throw that out there um, say like Strike King got Rage Tail um, Yum and Zoom they got Craw Daddies and all these different type of names of these um, curl, curly tail soft plastics and they're the ones that work because I guess with the soft plastic making all that movement in the water it actually entices the pickerel to come and chase it and the pickerel are the first fish that I catch. I start off the year. This sort of lets me know if, if I'm going to have a good year or a bad year by catching pickerel. And then I'm always catching pickerel. The biggest size pickerel I've ever caught was 36 inches, which is not bad. It's pretty decent size. And um, they're an awesome fish to catch. They fight like crazy and they're huge, long, skinny fish. And um, they got a lot of teeth, so you got to be careful. You see me always mishandling them because um, I'm scared of them. I don't want them to bite me. They got rows of teeth there, brother. If they bite you, they can get a good uh, chunk of you. You know what I mean? So I constantly be very aware of how I grab my fish and how I deal with my fish because I don't want to get bit. You know what I mean? I respect the fish. I'm not trying to get into a situation where the fish uh, bite my finger off, you know? Super dangerous. So, but those are things that, you know, that I always pay attention to. How are the fish reacting? What do they want? What kind of lures are they chasing? Those, how I started off this year. So I kept a log book of all my fishing adventures throughout this year because I want to use it for 2020. So, just to keep a document of where I'm at fishing and how I'm catching fish, you know? In this video here, I catch my first bass. Now, it's March. It's March. It's freezing cold. What is a bass doing out feeding at this time I was so surprised this is part of my, you know my research of you know being a bass fisherman I wanted the most fullest details I wanted you know what is reacting shaky head uh, wacky rig Texas rig um, is a Tokyo rig you know those are things that I wanted to know and you know and I also brought out the boat. I brought out the boat in this cold weather. I brought out the boat because, you know, I felt that last year I bought the boat and I didn't do much fishing in it. You know, I'm very scared of, of the water and being out there and, and, and messing around in these places because out here you hear stories of fishermen um, drowning in these lakes and drowning in these rivers and stuff like that. But we brought out the boat and um, Billy went and caught a smallmouth, a nice size smallmouth, you know. It was very awesome. It was, it was um, a learning experience, should I say. So now, you know, after a few catches, I'm like, okay, the fish are stagnant this year. They don't want to come out like last year. Last year, I was catching fish left and right, you know. I was also experimenting with a lot of different lures. This time I was trying to stay more in tune with what works. Here we out of here. Let's 
Materials. So trout season rolls around. Trout season rolls around and I'm trying all different things. I usually have this one rig that really works during trout season. And this rig for me always works, you know. I'll take a split shot, put it in the middle, my treble hook, a small tiny treble hook at the end, and I use this Berkeley's um, power bait that it's already in little um, circular round shapes already. So all I gotta do is take off the piece, put it on my hook, and throw it out there. It's very good, very effective, and I think that you guys, if y'all into um, trout fishing, I think that you should try this Berkeley Power Bait. It's like super good. And this rig, I saw it on a video that I've been watching. Um, I'm always trying to stay um, up to date with all the anglers and how they're doing their um, fishing experience, how, how their technique and their strategies work for them. So. I always try to study that so that I can have my own. And that was something that I saw in another in another video and I took it and um, it worked for me. It worked awesome for me. I was catching trout left and right. But this year I wanted to try all the stuff that you see in Walmart and in, in, in Dick Sporting Goods and Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops and stuff like that. I wanted to try it because there's some like there's like some really awesome lures that you find and you see in these places and in, and they're really like some are super expensive but then some of them are like a work of art you're like wow this is amazing how this somebody actually invent this or make this you know so on that note I decided yeah, I like the Joe flies I like the whole um, set up on how the joe flies are look and, and they're they're vicious they're vicious they got like all these different types of hooks on them and stuff like that so you know if you catch something you're not gonna let it get away because those hooks on those joe flies are vicious so on that note i'm out there throwing all these joe flies and um panther martins and all these different name brands trying them out because for me when I first started this site when I first started um, YouTube I wanted to show the fishermen that no it's not everything that you see out there you see these fishermen catching on $25 crankbaits um, $15 lures and all this crazy stuff like you know nobody that gets expensive your lures get caught up in trees and brush and debris in, in the bottom of that water you lost it that's fifteen dollars down the drain you know what i mean i've seen fishermen jump in water and try to retrieve these lures because they're so expensive you know what i mean and and it's just super difficult to try to um stay ahead of the game and not lose a hundred dollars in a fishing trip because you're throwing where these fishes, these fishes like yeah, to hide. They hide in these bushes. They hide in these twigs. They hide. They hide. Fish hide. So you have to throw where they're hiding. Because of that, you lose a lot of lures. Most common lures that I lose are crankbaits. I lose them all the time. They got these deep diving crankbaits and all this stuff and the wiggling motion of the crankbait. You know, yes, does it catch you fish? Yes, it does. But do you get stuck? 99% of the time, of course you do. Of course you do. So you have to pay attention to where you're throwing stuff. And, and for me, with all the things that I have acquired, I was like, you know what? It will be nice if this year I try to catch fish on every single lure that I try. We're in our bait here. Little perches. So the next fish that I catch is a um, perch, you know, it's sort of like a transition from species to species. The perch like, like that um, cold water 
a with a worm and a regular like drop shot rig, you'll catch numerous perch, numerous perch. And I've always caught them like in, in weird places like the Promised Land lakes and check and, that uh, out. Different lakes, they they're very much in lakes. The perch fishing is definitely in the lakes, and um, it's a great fish to catch. It reminds me of New York when you you was out there catching porgies and stuff like that. It's sort of like that, but the perch, um, they're very um, nosy fish. So if they see something in the water moving around, they're gonna try to bite it. They're gonna try to see if they can eat it and all that stuff. So you know, perch fishing for me. And my um, year uh, noting and jotting down everything that's going on, I learned that there is a period in the time of the year where your perch fishing goes skyrocketing. I mean, like skyrocketing. And I also found a few places where you could catch a nice amount of perch, anywhere from 15 to 20 a day. So, um, it was awesome. It's an awesome thing to know and to have written down that you're documenting these things because now when I want to come and take the boys out to go fishing and I don't want to sit there, the boys get easily distracted and they don't sit there and watch you fish or they don't sit there and enjoy fishing. If they're not catching fish, they're bored. They're telling you they're bored. They're telling you that. They don't want to be out there for so long. And you, you, for somebody who fishes and likes the peace and tranquility, it gets a little annoying. But during this time of me exploring and checking out places, um, I ran into a, a lot of good friends and uh, people that became friends and stuff like that. And my boy Rich was one. He showed me that uh, this one spot here, I had came to and I was trying a bunch of bass fishing stuff there and he told me nah that you know these things here what you got to do here is do a little drop shot rig and throw it in there and catch and you see how many um, perch you're gonna catch nice size perch not even like little perch like nice size perch and sure enough we was catching perch back to back I mean like really nice huge fat perch great meal a great meal so um i thought this was amazing you know what i mean and then you know to bump into rich like yeah it was cool it was a cool day and i appreciate rich thank you rich for um, showing me where these perches are at and stuff like that so now i got a new location and now every time i go there you know i might run into him and if i don't this day, maybe the next day I'll run into him and me and Rich will sit there and shoot this the, the shit a little bit, you know, and talk about what's going on and how it's fishing been for the last few days, you know what I mean? So, you know, you meet friends and um, fishing is a good way to sit and enjoy a peaceful day, especially after work. You can see me with my um, work clothes still on because at this time I got the fever now. I got the fever. I'm like... Right after work, I don't care. I'm shooting to go fish. And some days, let me tell you, some days I would go out there. I wouldn't even sleep. Work 12 hours, overnight third shift. Work 12 hours, come out, hook up my boat, get all my equipment ready, and then shoot out there for another six to eight hours in the water, dead tired, trying to hunt down fish and get this fishing thing going you know but I have to tell you guys you know there's a lot of different um, periods and times in, in, in the day you know and uh, you catch different fish during different times so you might go early catch a bunch of perch and you might go in the afternoon and end up with this big huge eel Rich catching this eel was amazing. I thought it was amazing. I wanted to take a closer shot of it and look at it because I would have never thought that these eels were in this water. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, 
you have to do those things. So then I get another grand scheme idea. Okay, catch perch, we're good. I know where to catch perch now. We're just going down the line. It's getting nicer and nicer out. But, um, you know, it's still cold during the morning times. So even though cold is, is just, like I said, it just didn't want to go away. So I decide, hey, since I'm exploring and checking out a bunch of places, let's rig a bike together. Get one of those telescopic poles that you got. And um, let's go hunt. Let's see what we nice fishing spots we could find. I get on my bike and I'm riding this trail that I'm usually on. And usually on this trail, I don't go no more than maybe five miles into the trail. But today I'm on a bike and I decide, you know what? I'm going to do 10, 15 miles. And I shoot down this trail. And let me tell you, my legs was hurting. Hurting because I haven't been on a bike in so long. You know, I was a little out of shape there. But uh, don't laugh at me. I did it. I tried it. It was the last time I did something like that because I was hurt. I was hurt for like three days. It hurt to ride bike for so damn long, bro. And uh, but it was a great adventure. I found different places. I, I didn't realize that that trail was so long, and it went so far into another town and everything. And it was. It was amazing, and then I found more connections of the canal. I saw where the canal dried up. I saw where the river connected. I saw where the river was super current, like super fast-flowing current that I've never seen the river that fast-flowing current. And, uh, and I saw these different new places, parts of, of that river that I never noticed before. So now I'm like, wow, this is great. Because now I know where I can go and park and check out these new places to fish. Okay. So that, that to me was amazing. I enjoyed the bike ride. It's something that I will do again the next year. But, you know, it's, it was just an amazing adventure this year. It was just an amazing adventure to just be out there roaming around in these forests and creeks and lakes and rivers and stuff like that and seeing what you could catch. I advise anybody that loves fishing to try it, you know, try and explore. Because as a fisherman, you get sort of habitual and, and you just want to go to these spots where you always catch. See right here by this podium right here, this is a spot where I go to catch a smallmouth. I shoot down one of these trails down there and uh, forget it. I catch a numerous, it's like a little jetty of rocks there and stuff like that. And I catch a numerous amount of fish there. But it's great. And, and I got to see a lot of the park and I got to see a lot of the canal. And, and let me tell you, there's different places. You could catch catfish. You could catch all kinds of different fish in this part of uh, the creeks and canals. I really enjoyed it. It was awesome. It was awesome. And the bike handled pretty good for something that I just put together one, two, three. So now I'm like, you know what? It's time to pull out the expensive stuff I got. You know, I got spinner blades that cost like $10, $15. I got um, crankbaits that are like $20, $25. And there's this pond that is just loaded loaded with bass from anywhere from one pound to about four pounds of bass in there the only thing is that they like to stick to the bottom and you gotta find them you gotta sort of find them where they're at so i shoot out this strike king spinner blade and boom i see the fish reacting because i wanted to see what are the fish reacting to this time of year what is going on so I catch in that pond some nice size fish. It was awesome. I go to my very first spot that when I first started fishing out here in Pennsylvania, um, this was a spot that I loved very much. I couldn't believe that they had places like this where you could just go and fish. In New York, you sort of got to like, it's not fishing friendly in the inner city of New York. There's 
there's peers and stuff like that, but they're they're not fishing friendly. They're not places where you have thirty fishermen in one little tiny pier. Like, no, open this up to the public. You guys are doing nothing with this area. Open it up to the public and let these guys fish. Let them have something else to do. But you know that's New York in Pennsylvania to see this here. I was like, whoa, amazing. This is great. I gotta explore. I gotta try all of this stuff. You know what I mean? Me and my cousins used to always go, and my uncles used to always go and, and explore different places to go fish because fishing was something that we loved to do in the past summer. And we would always explore, always explore. So it was nothing new to me, but it was amazing to do here, you know. Sometimes I, I wish, you know, that my family and friends from New York were out here in, uh, in PA and, and they running around seeing all these beautiful sights with me and doing what we used to do. But, you know, family stays where they stay and you end up doing a lot of things on your own. So I enjoyed it. I had fun running around and exploring and trying out my new rigs and checking out this canal and, and first fish that I used to catch in this canal was um, catfish. I would catch catfish in this canal because I would use the, the typical New York um, drop shot rig into these things not knowing that um, I would get worms and spinner blade hooks and all these crazy things that I know worked in New York but uh, out here in PA they would do different stuff they would do uh they had different plastics different rigs the carolina rig a texas rig a tokyo rig a ned rig and they had all these different kind of rigs that i had to learn to do i had to learn to do i would go to my job and i would explain to these guys like hey well this is what i'm doing and this is the only thing i'm catching like where are the fish at and then people would laugh at me and be like no that's not how you fish out here I hear you got to sort of use a different technique and um, stuff like that. So I started watching videos on YouTube on how to fish in freshwater and I figured out all these different rigs, different lines. I didn't, I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know what braided line was. I didn't know what the difference between mono and fluoro. I didn't know any of that stuff. You know what I mean? And I had to learn all of that stuff, you know? I would always go into the fishing stores and see all these different rigs and setups and be like, well, what are you supposed to catch with that, you know? And do I really want to handle a fish that I catch with that? You know, is it a mysterious fish or is it a fish that could really hurt me? Is it poisonous fish? You know, you never know what you yank out with these lures from the river or from these creeks. It was, it, was, it was a great adventure. It was something that I love to try. So I would explore and check it out and walk up and down this canal and stuff like that. I started figuring things out and I set up my first Texas rig. I set up my first Texas rig and boom, I catch this Mondo fish. It was about four and a half pounds and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. This is like one of the biggest fish I ever caught. So I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I saw that, you know, fishing could be some something that I could use to get my mind off of the things that were going on. I was going through a lot of rough times during these times and I needed a lot of time to myself to think and to clarify my mind. And it was awesome. And I loved it. And I loved the outdoors and I really enjoyed myself. But, you know, as you can see, hey, you get stuck. You can get stuck on 30, 40 times in a day, or you can pull out 30, 40 fish in one day. So it depends on ranges on how good you fish and what's your technique and what's your skill level. So now I'm like, you know what? This is all fine and dandy. I love um, catching fish, but man, it's getting nice out, and I want to. I want to sort of get out there in the water and in the boat and move around with the boat. So I'm trying all my nice um, bank 
spots that I that I like and that I want to try and stuff like that. And, and uh, I'm catching fish. I'm catching fish, not big fish like I was last year, but I'm catching one and two pounders, you know. But I bring out the boat, and I'm like, yeah. I'm going to all these spots now that I want to try and stuff like that. And listen, since I bought the boat, when I bought the boat that first year, I maybe caught two fish with the boat, which disappointed me, frustrated me. This year, I brought out the boat and I caught more fish with it because I learned that bank fishing and boat fishing are two different types of fishing. And again, you have to use different lures, different rigs, different setups, because it's not the same. From the bank, you're throwing into the deep and retrieving into the bank. And when you're on a boat, you're throwing to the bank and retrieving into the deep. So it's like backwards. So the rigs are different, different setups. You have to do different things. And, and, and um, I started catching fish from my boat this year, which was amazing. I loved it, you know. So I said to myself, you know what? Next year, I'm just gonna set up my boat the way I want it and get it going for some to, to do some really good fishing out in the water. But do I enjoy my bank fishing and exploring and climbing around and doing what I need to do? Hell yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that walking around through these forests and trails and going to the side. Hey, this looks like a nice spot to fish and throw in my rig and pull out a nice tiny fish or a nice big fish. It don't matter. It's still a fish and I caught it. So I loved it. I love fishing. And I've always loved fishing since I was a kid. So now, you know, like I said, I'm on my boat trying to catch these fish. You know, there's two rigs that really work for me, like super work for me. And I don't know about you guys, but I try to pay attention to those things. Because why spend $20, $30 on the lure when this is the rig that catches you the most fish? I use Wacky Rig and a Texas Rig. Those are my two most notorious rigs that I use. I catch numerous, numerous, numerous amount of fish using these two rigs. You know, this one particular spot is Naka Mixon. You know how many times I went to Naka Mixon and didn't catch anything? It's all about the rig and the setup and watching the transition of the fish during their um, pre-season and, and, and stuff like that. Here, I'm in Monchok. Now, Monchok, I discovered this place hearing through word of mouth from other people. And um, they told me about Monchok. And let me tell you, Monchok is the place to be. It's the place to go. One, it's a private lake. You got to pay to get in, which is great because you're not surrounded by 50,000 people trying to fish the same spot. And two, because it's privately stocked. So you'll know that you'll catch fish. Here, I'm throwing all kinds of different poppers and things like that, and I catch fish. You know? But um, I catch fish. I catch fish, and I love fishing. And, and this year, filming this um, documentary of me catching fish has been... Here in this video, I'm at the pond again, except this time I'm trying to chatter bait. Because like I told you, you know, I have so I have accumulated so many different lures and baits that I, I wanted to try them out all. Which ones are good, which ones are not good, which ones I don't need, which ones I should just, you know, keep in a tackle box, throw it away because they don't work. So, and let me tell you, chatterbait works. Chatterbait works. Grant baits work. Um, spinning uh, blades work. Um, there's a few that work out there, and then there's some that you spend fifteen, twenty dollars on, and they don't catch nothing. 
because you always gotta like pay attention to the weather and the uh, clarity in the water and didn't rain last week and where's the moon now and what's the barometer pressure and, and, and it, it's just too much there shouldn't be a lore that you have to pay attention to so much just to throw it out there like that's amazing so this year I was kind of ecstatic because my son Frankie caught his first bass and Frankie because of his swimming oh and learning how to swim so early in life they call Frankie fish but it was also the fact that Frankie always catches fish when he's with me sometimes he's the only one that catches fish he even beats me which is amazing and I love it and it makes me so proud but this year I had my oldest with me he got to see the boat he and you know my son Elliot he got to see the boat he actually got to be on the boat he loved it he loved the adventure he loved the responsibility that it took to have um, a vessel like this out in the water and stuff like that. And he, it came down to that. He kept asking me, like, yo, can we go to the lake again? Can we go to the lake again, Dad? Can we go to the lake again? Um, I want to go swimming. I want to do this. I want to do that. And he loved it. When you're out and about, you run into different um, animals while you're out there. So you have to pay attention when you're with your kids. Snapping turtle, bite a kid's toe off, no problem. No problem. It's nothing. But out here in Pennsylvania, we have um, water snakes. And these water snakes, some are poisonous, some are harmless. But because I am not a fan of snake, any snake is dangerous to me. So at this trip, I'm here with my man Dave. Now my man Dave always goes fishing with me, always. And sometimes he'll set it up and be like, "Yo, E, I'm going fishing. Uh, about what's up? You coming? I'm coming to get you." That's what I love about Dave. That Dave will come out here and come and get me and take me fishing, which is great. You know what I mean? Shout out to Dave. You know I love you, bro. Um. And we have the most amazing time fishing. Sometimes we catch fish, sometimes we don't, but we out there chit chatting and bullshit and doing what guys do, you know? And uh, there's some water snakes. We caught footage of a freaking water snake while we was out in uh, Beltsville. This is Beltsville. Beltsville, I call it Snake Central. There are so many water snakes in Beltsville that people need. And you know, people love this place. They jump in it, and, and like if it's a beach, and they jump in this water and stuff like that. Look at all the life under there in that water, man. But sometimes during the season, they close this, this lake off because it, it's a run, it has a runoff from like some sewer or some, some shit like that. And it starts to build like this bacteria, and, and then you can't even go in the water. So, I would, if you go to Beltsville, I would suggest you eat the fish from there. So, yeah, we end up finding these water snakes out there and stuff like that. And, and this is not the first time. Like, I've found um, holes filled with them, 15, 20 snakes in one, in one place, you know. And um, I hear in PA, they have, like, this... Um, Reptile a program thing, I don't know what how to call it, but basically you report all the reptiles you see out there, especially snakes, they want to know about them. You know. You never know. You never know what kind of snake you're running into. You know, like I said, some are harmless and more scared of you than than you are of them. And um, some are very poisonous. So you sort of got to be careful, you know? So it was crazy to catch some underwater footage with my GoPro of that snake. And you see, all that moving around was because I, I had it rigged up to my fishing pole. <laughs> I had it rigged up to my fishing pole. So I would just like sort of like pitch it to where the snake was at. And the camera would just spin around and spin around and spin around and spin around. 
That's the snake right there, guys. That is the snake right there, guys. Crazy, right? Then we decide, you know what? Let's try some night fishing. Billy comes with his brother, and uh, we're like, you know what? Let's go catfishing at night, see what we could catch. And uh, we went out there, we tried all these different um, types of uh, bait that they got. They, they got this uh, thing online where you put hot dogs with um, strawberry jello mix and, um, and, the, and use the powder, that, and you sort of let it ferment with some garlic. And it's supposed to help you catch fish catch catfish and let me tell you that you didn't catch no catfish with that um billy and his brother used um some liver with uh another curate that they use um that also is like a dye too so you throw the liver right in the middle of the water and the dye sort of like lets off the scent and the catfish is supposed to come and attack that but um if i tell you that None of that bait we used caught catfish. You will probably think I was lying, but it didn't. It didn't catch any catfish. And we and what ended up catching the catfish was like regular worms, which made us laugh and crack up laughing that whole night because we were like, damn, like we tried everything. And then at the end of the day, what ends up catching the catfish is regular old worms. Like, that is crazy. But we caught some catfish, and at this time, um, what I figured out at night time is that GoPros don't really work at night. And you have to have a nice amount of light or a nice floodlight that you could film in the dark because GoPro footage in the dark sucks. And that's what I learned about that. So now if I do another night fishing trip, it is going to be well lit. Very well lit. I got as, as brave as going out there by myself at night and going bass fishing at night. Because I'm watching all these videos of people bass fishing at night and catching bass at night. And let me tell you, it works. It works. It really happens. Bass really react at night. And bass, you can really catch bass at night. And some nice sized bass too. Not those little dinks I've been catching all year. But, you know, there's my Texas rig. You know, I'm using um, big bullet sinkers and three and four odd BWG hooks. Big hooks. Because now at this point, I'm searching for those big, huge fish. Five pounders, six pounders, seven pounders, eight pound fish. I'm looking for them. I mean, like we up here, we don't have the luxury of catching double-digit fish like we do in Texas or all those down south states, you know. But you know, we do catch four or five pounders up here. Like, you just gotta find them. There was someone out there, and and I really didn't understand um, what this year was bringing to me. This year was bringing to me like um, a lot of one and two pounder fish. I don't know if. Um, all the big fish were hiding or went somewhere else to migrate or whatever, but you know, it's just um, something that you have to learn as you go fishing, as you go out there and fish during the different times of the year and stuff like that. And in this area where I go fishing right here, in this video that you see right now, um, when it rains, the water gets really muddy, but you can still catch fish. You can still catch fish, and I catch fish left and right in this area. So much that now my friends named it um, Elliot's Peak <laughs> because that's where I go and I catch the most amount of fish from. And and I'm always showing them videos of them of me coming here and catching fish. So um, it's kind of cool, you know. And making these videos, I, I was really promoting the channel a lot and, and um, trying to get the best footage for you guys. Um, during my promotion of the channel and stuff like that, I also ran into a lot of people that um, like to in endorse their um, 
their lures and their and their product and um and I've had people send me stuff to put in my videos and stuff like that which I thought was amazing and it's one of the perks of having a YouTube channel and a nice amount of viewers people wanted want their stuff to be seen and seen catching fish so it just does great it's just a great thing to do um, and I've gotten I've acquired a lot of fishing equipment because of this so I'm out there catching fish I'm out there catching fish did you guys see that so you know we're at the end of my documentary um, I hope you guys enjoyed all the videos and all the stuff that I put on this documentary for you guys. I just wanted you guys to see all the things that I've been going through and all the fishing adventures I've been doing. And um, I hope you guys enjoy, man. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, tap that bell for more notification. There's a documentary that I decided to make that's been long awaited. And, um,. It was really fun to put this all together because it showed me like the journey that I've been through this year just trying to catch some fish, you know. Next year I'll be doing another documentary, but it's going to have a lot more different footage. I will be joining tournaments. Um, you're going to see some upgrades I did to the bow. Um, we're going to do more um, exploring. And um, hopefully we'll have some great great catches for you guys and you guys could enjoy being out here and seeing what Bass Conquistador does to catch these fish man um, it's all for you guys I love you subscribers for always showing support and um, showing love to the kid and it's amazing it's an amazing journey and I just really want you know the YouTube site for you guys that don't know what it is to fish in these fresh water and maybe be a little educational. I know I don't show a lot of videos um, on how I rig or any um, explanation on how I do things, but I try to show some explanations. I try to show some, some rigging techniques and stuff like that. But mostly I just want you guys to see like, hey, we're catching fish. This is what's catching fish. And don't waste your money and your time on things that, you know, don't catch fish. It's not convenient for you in your area, you know. It's always good to explore. Explore out there. Get out there. Get one with nature. See what's going on out there. And enjoy fishing, you know. Enjoy fishing. Enjoy the time. Basque Quisador. Deuces.